Welcome to Carter's Retro Reviews. Today we're going to be reviewing Race Driving for the Sega Saturn. Just trying to get a shot there. Looking great. Now, this game was made by Time Warner Interactive. Uh, I don't know actually if they made the game. I don't think they developed it. I think they published it. But they also did uh, Psychic Killer Toromaru, which is a $400 game on eBay. And Virtual Racing, which I felt kind of mm, about. So, it's called Race Driving. But it should really be called Race Phelan. <laughs> Get it? Because it's like a shit game, and I'm shit at the game. <laughs> yeah, I'm shit at the game. Now I'm sad. I was watching a Watch Mojo video on the Evil Tubes and Race Driving was declared the worst and most unplayable game on the SNES. And I thought, hey, I own that on the Saturn. Let's see if the Saturn can do a little better. So here we are. I'm kindly reminded of a game on PC I used to play called Stunts. It turns out that Stunts was actually inspired by Race Driving. And while I love Stunts, this game doesn't fill me with the same love, even though it does give my dopamine receptors that slice of nostalgia. But it's just not the same. On top of this, I played Race Drive in the arcade game in this pizza place we went to when we were on holidays at Byron back in the 90s and from memory, thought it was pretty rad. But to be fair, just about any game with a steering wheel and foot pedals in the 90s got three thumbs up from this guy. So how is it? Well, you have to understand too that this game was originally out in 1990 and the Saturn port was released in 1995. Okay, sure, there'd been a few enhancements to give you some reason to even bother looking at it, but is it still worth buying? The presentation is pretty dull. No intro video, but a very busy intro screen with lots of writing that was hard to read. Then the actual menu presentation is so boring and uninspired, it makes you question what sort of game you're about to wander into. In game we're given a car dash, which is also a little busy, but it serves as a method of only having to render two thirds of the screen. A trick they must have learnt from Gale Racer, am I right? <laughs> During a race, it told me I needed fuel with a flashing fuel light, but the fuel gauge had not moved from its original position, indicating I still had half a tank. While the clock at the top stands out, the colour is pretty ugly and it doesn't fit in. Also, there is no theme at all throughout the entire game. Simply a mishmash of whatevers. Graphics are bought up time and time again because they seem to be a sore point for those who own the game on either the Super Nintendo or the Mega Drive slash Genesis. And while they are definitely much better this time around, it still doesn't really add much because there are other elements working against it. While the animation overall is pretty good, there are poorly rendered 2D sprites along the sides of the road such as the trees or brick walls. Colours are pretty pixelated in some areas and alright in others. There is also glitching all throughout with walls which don't appear or a piece of track that just goes missing on certain angles. It also gives a pretty poor sense of speed, and sometimes the draw distance can be a total pain if you haven't mastered the course. Depending on which mode you're in, you'll either get okay sounding midis, or no music but engine sound effects which are also okay. I wouldn't care so much about the music, but so far, it's not really painting a particularly good picture for the game. Gameplay is bad. The handling of each car is pretty poor. The fastest, easiest to steer car feels like a tank or a truck to drive. The truck feels more realistic granted, but it's still hard to maneuver. I should be able to drive around without having to just about stop or significantly cut corners. It slides you off to the road, but in a controlled way that makes you feel like you can't really rectify the situation, unlike OutRun. The only fun I had was when I crashed, and I crashed a lot. The crash physics were so bad, it was actually pretty funny. The tracks are fine, very reminiscent of stunts, or rather, stunts is reminiscent of this game. But you can't make tracks like you can in stunts, which adds to the gameplay in a substantial way. Even then, there is either two types of loop, a tunnel, or hills to drive up and down. It should be more fun than it is. It's not arcade fun, and it's not realistic enough to be a simulator. I'm not sure what this game wants to be, although it probably was arcade fun back in 1990. Replayability is several modes. 
all are a lot less fun than their description. Would I recommend this game? No. It was outdated by 1995 and while this port was heads and tails above the Mega Drive or Genesis version, it was outshone by, well, just about any other racing game of the era. Even Stunts, which came out months after the arcade version in 1990, was far and away a better time than this game. 